Well, boys, it's almost time for week two of the XFL, baby. And I'm excited, ecstatic. And first off, we got to talk about Pepper Johnson getting fired from the LA Wildcats. How do you get fired after one week? How do you how do you get fired after one week on the job, bro? What, what how bad was that LA Wildcats defense? It was pretty bad, but it did it didn't deserve, you know, getting fired on the first after the first week. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? And the second big thing that we need to talk about is. My boy, my quarterback for the Renegades, Landry Jones, making his debut this week. He's making his debut this week, and I am so excited. Um, also, Josh Johnson's also apparently, you know, getting um, his debut this week as well. Um, I'm ready for both these guys to come on the field and get ready and, you know, get, you know, just... Get, get the season, you know, underway, get it all good, and, and all that good stuff like that, you know, it's going to be a fun, fun time, but we got week two here, and there are, are some good-ass games, week two, first off, we got the New York Guardians taking on the DC Defenders, that's 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 o'clock Central, ABC, baby, and these two teams are 1-0, um, both these teams look really they looked really good so far. Cardell Jones, when he when he's throwing the ball out there and stuff like that, you know, he can he can throw that ball, man. He can throw it. But uh you know, I think the DC defenders will put something, you know, on Matt McLoyne. Matt McLoyne really didn't have too much to do against what the Vipers, you know, last week. They really didn't he really didn't do too much. I mean, he ain't threw for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown, but it was mostly that Guardians defense. So it'll be a battle of two defenses um, first off this week. And there's already a point spread for this game, so if you're on the betting line, it's the defenders at five and a half. Um, so uh, the second game of that Saturday it will be the Tampa Bay Vipers and the Seattle Dragons. Both these teams are 0-1. It'll be at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central on Fox, and the Vipers are a two and a half point favorite. These are from the CBS lines right now. Um, I don't know what in the world is going to happen here in this game because I mean both these teams not look the greatest, um, especially Tampa Bay. That offense looked abysmal. I mean, come on now, Aaron Murray, Quentin Flowers, neither of them could do anything, but. Brandon Silvers, he's very interesting, you know. Um, you know, he's a very interesting guy, let me tell you that. Um, he can throw the ball, um, but he can, he's also made a couple of mistakes, you know, out there. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, looking at, looking at it, I think, you know, there, there, there could be something. And, again, the Vipers are favored in this game. Don't know why they didn't look too great. Um, but, you know, if Austin Pro gets the ball, I think, you know, this will be something that where it's like, hey, the Dragons may get this W. But then again, you never know. The point spreads do not care. I don't really care for the point spreads, but, you know, that's, not, that's nothing right now. But then on Sunday, we got the Dallas Renegades going up to L.A. to take on the Wildcats. So, so there you go, Josh Johnson. Coming in, taking on Landry Jones. It's going to be a fun, fun time, baby. It's going to be a fun time. So, we, 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 as far as my Renegades go, we got to get something going. Um, if Landry can't get it going, then, I mean, shoot. I don't know, baby. I don't know. Wildcats defense did not look very good. That's why they fired Pepper Johnson. So, um, perfect segue. Perfect segue in the thing. So, um and it could be the same this week if the air raid offense, you know, that we have picks apart the Wildcats. And with Landry Jones in under, um, in, in under center instead of Philip Nelson, I think we could pick apart, um, pick apart these Wildcats and just just beat them up, batter them up, and, and put them down. I 
And the point spread here is that we are favored by four and a half points. So as far as the Renegades go, we got to convert on third down. Got to get touchdowns this time around. And for the Wildcats, I think, you know, just got to try a little bit harder on defense. You already fired your first defense coordinator. Don't make it two for two <laughs> in two weeks because that would be bad. Um, and then finally, at 6 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Central, you got the St. Louis Battlehawks taking on the Houston Roughnecks. Oh, boy, Jordan Tom and P.J. Walker. Both these guys were excellent in week one. And, and there's no better way to give them a rightful matchup that they deserve than this one. And the point spread here is that the Roughnecks are favored by eight points. So, mm, I don't know. Oh, that St. Louis offense was definitely, you know, a ground-heavy type approach. They were out of the pistol a lot in that game against Dallas, and they did very, very well with Jordan Tiamu at quarterback. And then P.J. Walker, I mean, what can you say for him? And the man could throw. The man was throwing bombs. The man was just doing everything right. Yeah, he threw an interception late in the game, but that was like it, the game was already out of reach by that point, so... Um, they were trying to get greedy. It didn't work. But in any case, um, I think the Battle Hawks and the Roughnecks are going to have a very, very interesting game. It might be the highest scoring game of week number two. I mean, it it, and it honestly just depends on what these other games are going to be like. But, you know, and this game will actually be on FS1. So, you know, catch, get your FS1. Um, uh, I'm not sure if everybody has FS1, but you know, get get it get it together, you know, get it in there and everything like that. So two games on ABC this week, a game on Fox, and then game on FS1. So it'll be very interesting to see. I'm pretty sure all the guys that commentated for each of those games from um, from last week are gonna be you know commentating the games this week. So I have. G. Reg, G. Reg Olsen up in here. We might have Pat McAfee. I know we're gonna have Pat McAfee up in here. I'm pretty sure he's playing. Pretty sure he's on the Sunday game. I'm not sure, um, but we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll check on that another time. That's not important. What's it, what is important is these games, um, and there's still a lot to learn. We still got a lot to learn. Let's see if we get an overtime game this week because we haven't gotten one yet. We want to see that overtime stuff in action. See if somebody can you know get a kick return and take it for a touchdown. There's been some really close ones um, last couple of weeks. Um, and let's just see more, you know, of that XFL style. You know, that XFL could stick around. And uh, honestly, you know, there's gonna be some things that kind of look ugly, like Globe Light Park being a football stadium, basically now for the, for the Renegades or using MetLife as a football stadium, but that's that's all out the window. We got games to play, baby. So, let's see how week two goes. It's been one week. Two teams have already started to gel a little bit together. Some teams, maybe not so much, but that that's the beauty of the game. You know, you gotta, you gotta adjust, improvise, adapt, overcome each and every week. So, let's do this, baby. XFL week two. Who's ready? I'm ready, so let's go, baby. Let's go.